Hello everybody, welcome to a different style of video that I'm doing. I've decided to basically do uh, a series of videos uh, talking about certain emulators that I use and possibly give little like tutorials on people who are a little bit new to emulation or have never been into emul emulation whatsoever. So that way people can know what they're getting into because some people don't know how to do emulation some people have heard about it and seen it but they don't know how to how to get it working on a computer and stuff so I'll give you the uh, a little tutorial on how to do that so in order to, for to you know emulate something on your computer you're going to need an emulator to get an emulator you can simply download them from certain websites now I'm not going to s tell you the websites um, out front in this video what I'll do is I will put a link in the description uh, linking to a few uh, well to two websites where you can actually download emulators from that way you can click on them and you uh, you can download them they're pretty safe to be honest there's no issue with any of the websites. I visit them all the time myself. I'm always using them. But I'll link them in the description as well as the place where you can get some of the ROMs from um, to run uh, the games on the emulator for an order for an because in order for an emulator to work you need the games and games come in ROM files at least for the emulator that I'm going to show you today. So the emulator that I use, the most this is a good one for if you if you're just getting into emulation and you want a basic, easy one to use, it is called Visual Boy Advance. Now, when you go to the website and you download it, uh, it'll download in a zip file. Simply unzip it and place it wherever you want. It's pretty much um, one of these types of emulators that doesn't require a setup wizard to work. You can just unzip it and boom it's on your computer so once you've done that you're going to then want to download your games like I said I've linked in the description down below where you can obtain games from click on that and then you can just basically download the game that you want unzip the file and then place it wherever you like now I will preface this up front if you're going to be downloading a bunch of Game Boy Color Game Boy Game Boy Advance games, you're going to want to put them in a folder for each format. So that way you can work through the games a bit easier without scrolling through a giant list and finding out which is which, or trying to remember where you put them, for example. So in order for you to get your emulator working, you double click it, obviously, and you then have your window here. So you click File, and then you click Open. Now, as you can see, when I click on Open Game Boy, it links me directly to my Game Boy Game Boy Color folder that I compiled myself in my own free time, just in my documents somewhere. You can simply just do that. And then when you've got all the games that you want and you've unzipped them, just grab the GB or GBC files and move them to the folder. So, let's quickly load up a game real quick. Let's load up Super Mario Land. It's a pretty simple game. Now as you can see here it's in the um, size that a Game Boy screen would be. Now if you want that uh, to be uh, maximized you can with the maximize button. So you can make it full screen if you want. Next I will run you through a couple of um, while this demo is playing I'll run you through a few things that this emulator is capable of. Other than opening games, you can save your game, meaning you can make a save state. Now, some games have battery saves, and battery saves save to your hard drive, usually in the very same folder that the game's been loaded from. You can, uh, re you can basically change the the file path to a folder where you actually put the saves if you want to, but some people are not too fussed with it because you can tell the difference between a GB file, a GBC file, and a GBA file 
uh, with a save file, which is an SA1 file, I believe. So what you'll want to do is, you can save your game, you can do the save state, you can then load the save state. What this does, it saves the game at the time that you're playing, and then you can load it for later. Uh, game Boy games um, usually have battery saves, so you should be fine to just load up your battery save if you want, but if you, for some odd reason, if you want to save mid-game, you can do that. Uh, you can pause the emulator, you can reset it. Obviously you have your recents list, which is stuff that you've loaded recently. You can import and export battery files. I don't really do this very often. I think it's just if you want to switch battery files, if you have a secondary battery file, of of a progress that you've done and you want to load that up you can and you can also export a battery file you can also do screen captures and you can even get some ROM information up such as license and checksum CRC stuff like that next is your options you have frame skipping which makes the game run faster like ridiculously faster, we'll get onto that in a minute. You have your videos, you have emulators. Now, all of this stuff that I have enabled here is stuff that already um, came out of the box when I unzipped um, Visual Boy Advance, meaning you'll pretty much have similar settings to mine when you um, when you basically load it up. If you don't have specific settings and you want them exactly like mine, just pause the video and look through each setting and enable those ones that you know that you want that way it's closer to the settings that I have I guess if you if you really really want that now another thing you can do is the configuration when you load up Visual Boy Advance it'll just recognize your mouse and keyboard or just your keyboard in that case for the input now if you want to actually plug in a controller and use it you can you just simply plug it in and click on the configure. Now, usually number one is the most dominant one because it's player one usually. Actually, no, it's not player one, it's just different configuration formats. So you have like profile one, profile two, three, four, and then you can pick your default. I don't know why I thought that was multiplayer. I think it's probably because I was thinking of a console um, emulator as opposed to a handheld emulator. Anyway, you click on configure. As you can see, I already have my buttons set up ahead of time anyway. But let's say for the sake of argument, we have left as the same here, just, just for the sake of it, right? Or better yet, actually, I'll use a keyboard um, cursor. Let's use um, my left arrow on my keyboard. So you click on each button, and then you press on your input on your controller. So there you go, I have up, down, left, and right, and I have the buttons set up the way that I want them. Now if you want to, you can set other buttons for other functions, such as speed, which we'll get onto in a moment, capture, which is uh, screenshots, and uh, GS is Game Shark, I believe, which is your cheats and stuff. We'll get onto that later. So you press OK, and you're away you go. Now the thing is, the best part about um, Visual Boy Advance, if you plug in your controller ahead of time and you load up Visual Boy Advance again for your next gaming session, um, it'll remember what you um, configured your controller with. There has been a couple of instances where I have plugged my controller in ahead of time and it's reset to keyboards, which m means me putting my inputs in again, but I'm 80% certain 80% certain that I probably double clicked on Visual Boy Advance before plugging my controller in. So take what I just said with a grain of salt. But either way, if it resets, you can just simply set it again. It's not that difficult and it's not doesn't really take uh, that long to do. So here you have your cheats. You have a cheat list. Um, you can add Game Genie or Game Sharks and you can enable certain codes. I don't have any for this game at the moment, obviously. You can look around online and you can find um, Game Genies and Game Sharks. Now what you want to do is, if you're using a Game Shark or a Game Genie code, 
make sure that the code you're getting is correspondent to the region version of the game you're playing. So let's say for example you download a US version of Mario Kart on the GBA but you want cheats for it, you'll have to get cheats that are for the USA version for example as opposed to a European version or a Japanese version. And what you do is with the cheats by the way, just so you know, you enable the cheats that you want and then you play around with them um, and then just before you save anything in your game make sure you turn the cheats off because Game Genie and Game Shark are quite uh, infamous for erasing your data because you kept certain cheats on and you saved with certain values and settings enabled. Next is the tools thing. I don't really play around with tools. There is a record and play function which lets you record movies in game and then you can like do rewind features and stuff like that. Some of them let you go really in depth which is quite fun. I don't really play around with this too much because I usually just record uh, when I'm uh, putting uh, stuff together or in some cases I just stream and OBS picks it up anyway. Also you've got your help and bug reports and stuff like that as well as the about and FAQ. So let's quickly play the game. I've waffled on long enough. So yeah, this is Mario, naturally. Now, do you remember when I said that you could speed the game up? Well, you can with this button. Now, do you notice the percentage on the top left where it says Visual Boy Advance? It went from roughly in the hundreds to ridiculous percentage. That's because I'm holding down the button. So let me go back to unpausing. It's going at normal speed. Look, Mario's going really fast. And this is because it's skipping frames. Obviously I died. Now, the only function I can really think of as speed up being ever so useful is if you're playing like an RPG or something and you just want to fight enemies over and over again and you're OP, or rather you're quite strong, but you just want to grind XP. You can just hold down that button and just like press all the days pretty much um, and get all the XP that you'll ever need which is good for if, if you're playing Pokemon for example and you just want to grind a bunch and, and not worry too much so that's pretty much uh, the Game Boy stuff being shown now I'll quickly show you the GBA stuff let's click open open game um, not Game Boy open just open you can do this as well if, you, if you're a bit of a stickler you can just simply close the current emulation you have running, for example. Some people just load, even if the game's paused, but you can close it. Click open. And let's just load up Mario Kart, because Mario Kart is a good litmus test, as it were. Of course, my window is resized. You can simply just resize it, and maximize it again. I don't think there's a setting that, um, to disable that, but it's fine. So as you can see, single player, it's just, it's Mario Kart, you know, in the best format ever. <laughs> I'll quickly show you a quick bit of gameplay, just so you know that it's working and everything's all good. As you can see, it's working like uh, that Mario Kart usually does. I can also use the speed up here too as well. I just did it there a little. I don't recommend it doing it doing that during racing games. To be fair, because you won't be able to weave. You won't have quick enough reflexes. <laughs> I could play this game forever. To be fair. Anyway, let's quit out. As you can see, it's working fine. And if you just want to simply close, you can just close. 
So, another thing is, another thing or another question I'm probably going to get from someone, or maybe someone's already thinking it, is can I play old school Game Boy games with the old filter? Like, the old green filter. I'll quickly show you. So let's load up Super Mario Land. I'll resize the window, just because. So you go to this option here, it's called Filter. There's a bunch of options. Most of these are visual filters. Some of them will make the game look a bit blurry, some of them will make uh, make them look really clean and crisp. Play around with the ones that you want. Usually I just leave it to normal. I prefer the my games to be unfiltered, per se. But if you want to make your um, <coughs> visuals a bit cleaner or a bit blurrier for whatever reason, you can do that. So, in order for you to get old school colours, you'll have to click on Game Boy. You can even have border, printer, you can have an automatic border, you can do all sorts here. I usually just have these, this setting enabled. You can click real colours, which is your colours, and then you can have Game Boy colours. Game Boy colours only changes it slightly to a slightly shade of grey. It looks okay, but it looks a tad bit dark to me. Which is why I prefer real colours because it's a bit brighter and more vibrant to me. As you can see, the demo is loaded up for Super Mario Land. So, go to Game Boy and click on colours. As you can see here, you have user 1, user 2, and you have your default. So, let's say, for example, I want to keep my default settings as they are, but let's say I want this one for old school. Um, old school uh, Game Boy Green. You just simply click on this, you press OK, and boom, you've got an old school filter, or an old school coloration, I should say. Next, click on here, if you want to do what I just did again with the colors, if you want like a secondary color, you can. Let's be a bit wild and pick pink, because pink is cool. And there you go. You've got your filter, off, and if you just want to go back to, well not filter, but if you just want to go to regular colors again, click on the one that's desired. You can change these. I think you can even customize them any which one you want. So if there's a specific color palette that you really like, you can do that. I'm going to go back to the default one, because I prefer the default. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much Visual Boy Advance in a nutshell, and how to get it running and how to work work with it. Just make sure that you uh, organize your games in the right way that you want them and uh, happy gaming everyone pretty much. Um, I will put the link in the description below where you can get the emulator and the games uh, where you can get them from. I will also um, put a link here to another website where you can also get games. I will recommend that you have like some kind of uh, antivirus or protection for the other one that I'll recommend because I've heard some people say they've had um, a couple of issues go into the website. Uh, go to that one at your own risk. I will even put in um, giant capitals and in brackets that that one's risky per se if you don't have uh, any kind of updated antivirus. If you're on like Windows 10 and you have Windows Defender, you should be okay. But if you don't, um, then I would chance it and I'd go to the other website that I reference above where you can get both the emulators and both the games. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the uh, next um, emulator tutorial video that I do. Ciao for now.